So it all sort of starts with me. I'm the one that has to write the script. I'm the one that has to uh, to set the vision for what happens as the writer and the director. Um, you know, as the writer, I, I don't even put on the directing hat yet. Sometimes I just write crazy things like, you know, Dracula floats up into the air and, and, and then we, I'll leave it to the director to figure out later. And the director's me, so I'll start thinking about it at some point. But the first thing that I have to do is get the book. So I bought this book, um, this edition of Dracula, of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And, um, and I just started plowing through it. And I read the book years ago, and I've seen certainly, you know, tons of movie adaptations of it. And I think the reason it is so adapted all the time is that people, uh, it's really easy to adapt. It lends itself very well to, uh, to, dr to drama, and it's such a beautifully written book. You couldn't do this in a two-hour movie, this, this whole book. There's so many beautiful moments and so many, um, you know, wonderful scenes and, and characters and things like that. And, and it's so in-depth that you would really, I think you would really almost need, like, you know, a five-episode miniseries on HBO or something to, to really get into all this kind of thing. Um, but for me, as a writer, I just sort of, I just start reading and I just start outlining things um, as, as I go along. So we can see right here, like, I've started outlining passages, certain actions, and dialogue. A lot of dialogue. I, for me, it's really important to keep in the voice of the book, and uh, the dialogue is certainly a part of that. And I have to change things at certain points to, you know, to make it a little more accessible to the kids in the audience. So, if, you know, I try to do that as little as possible. I don't like to invent characters. I don't like to in, uh, invent scenes. Most of what I do when I'm adapting is squashing time. You know, I may put elements from these different moments into one scene. But that's really like my, that's that's as far as I'm going to go with artistic license. Because it is important to me that when schools come to see this, that they they can give the kids the book and the kids will, you know, or the kids will have read the book and come see the show and they'll have an experience where they recognize what's in the book and be able to sort of, you know, appreciate the art of adaptation. That was a big thing with Frankenstein last year. A lot of uh, high school students who came who had read Frankenstein and were big fans of the book really liked the way that we just stayed as faithful as possible to the book. You know, we didn't we didn't go inventing a lot of uh, new things. Um, so, you know, that's where it starts with me. And I just sort of sat down and I uh, handwritten notebooks and I just started sketching out scenes uh, and moments and things like that. And I, I honed in on the core characters that I really wanted to focus on, which are uh, Dracula, Jonathan, Mina, Lucy, her three suitors, and Van Helsing. And uh, that was pretty much it. And there are three brides of Dracula, too, who, uh, who play a big part in the story as well. It took me maybe three months to write a first draft and then to, to, to polish it up in another few months. I started working on it around the beginning of the year, and I gave the script to Marty in July. So really, like, off and on, just chipping away at it, chipping away at it for about a period of six months. And then he's checked it out, and, and um, you know, we've talked over various elements. And now we're bringing on... Uh, designers, costume designers, set designer, props, lights, and, uh, and and we're getting ready to head into the process of casting. So that's that's really like the the basics of the adaptation part.